Let's talk about a question I keep seeing in the writing and editing communities, and that question is, should you pay for a beta reader? Hi there, my name is Katie Morgan. I am an indie fantasy author and fiction editor, and welcome to Bardic Fool's Editing Advice for Writers, the series where I talk about the ins and outs of editing and getting feedback on your creative work. For writers, one of the major parts of getting feedback is working with beta readers. So definitions may vary, but as I mentioned in my previous video on the editing process, Beta readers are generally people who read within your genre, and they can give you some feedback on their experience as readers when they're looking at your work. So in this video, I want to talk about the increasingly common practice of offering paid beta reader services. I wanted to make this video because I'm not really sure where I fall in terms of whether I'm on board with this practice or not on board with this practice, so I thought it might be interesting to talk about it. So I'm going to go through some reasons why you might want to pay for a beta reader, and also some reasons why you might not want to pay for a beta reader. And I would love to continue the conversation in the comments below as long as we can all agree to be respectful of each other's opinions and experiences. Before we get started, a couple of definitions because I think they'll be relevant as we move along. According to Merriam-Webster, professional means characterized by or conforming to the technical or ethical standards of a profession. And profession means a calling requiring specialized knowledge and often long and intensive academic preparation. Okay, so let's start with why you might want to pay for a beta reader. Reason number one, some beta readers are also editors. I want to be really, really clear that a beta read is not the same thing as an edit. However, if you can find a beta reader who is also an editor, that might give you another level of feedback that you wouldn't get necessarily from a free beta reader. Essentially, a beta reader who is also an editor would be bringing a little bit more professional background to the experience and might be able to give you a little more insight. But because it's not a professional edit, you're probably not paying as much as you would be for a professional edit. Reason number two, and this is a big one, if you pay someone to do the work, they're probably going to finish doing the work. One of the potential issues with free beta readers is that they often drop out or simply ghost you before the end of the project. And while I think that is completely understandable, life happens and we all have to be willing to be accommodating to a certain extent, it can also be really frustrating as a writer when you're trying to hit a particular deadline. But if you pay your beta reader, then you've got that financial contract, so they might feel a little bit more motivated to complete the work. Reason number three, a paid beta reader can be helpful when you don't have a solid writing community. Of course, you should always be working to develop your writing community, but if you feel like you don't have much of a community yet, or people are not available to help you with this particular project, a paid beta reader might be the way to go. Reason number four, Beta reading can involve some pretty intense work, and beta readers are deserving of your appreciation. One way to show that you really value someone's time and effort is to pay them. And since a beta reader is spending hours and hours reading thousands and thousands of words, giving you really helpful feedback, it makes sense that you might want to provide them with some sort of financial compensation. Okay, let's talk about the reasons you might not want to pay a beta reader. Reason number one, a beta reader isn't necessarily a professional. I kind of hinted at this before, but let me just be clear. Beta readers, not the same thing as an editor. Remember those definitions earlier about professional and profession? Being a beta reader doesn't really require any kind of qualifications. This isn't like a professional level job. You're giving your feedback and your thoughts as a reader. When it comes to beta reading, experience is nice, but there isn't really specific professional training like there is for editing or another professional service. There aren't necessarily qualifications or standards when it comes to a beta reader, like there would be for an editor or a formatter or a cover artist, for example. That doesn't mean that the beta read isn't valuable, it absolutely is, but arguably it's not a professional level service that you would pay for. Reason number two, traditionally beta reading is about being part of the writer community. At least in my experience, beta reading has been kind of part of what you do if you're a writer. It's a way you help other writers out. I think of beta reading kind of like a writer's workshop. If you showed up to a writer's workshop and you had to pay to get everyone's feedback, that would be a little weird. The point of the writer's workshop is that you're all workshopping each other's pieces and that you're doing it because you value writing and you value the community. Essentially, the trade-off for your time is that you get to help other folks out and you get to enjoy reading stuff before anybody else gets to read it. Reason number three, money. 
Either you don't have a lot of it or you're concerned about what effect money is gonna have on the quality of the feedback. And by that, I mean the whole discussion around things like if you're paying for a review, how honest is the review, that kind of thing. To be clear, I absolutely do think there are beta readers for hire who provide high quality, honest feedback. But because there aren't those professional guidelines, this can be kind of a murky area depending on who you're talking to. And reason number four, equivalent exchange doesn't necessarily mean money. Publishing a book can take a lot of time and effort and money, especially if you're an independent author and you're doing a lot of this based out of your own budget rather than a publisher's. And if money is an issue for you, it's completely understandable that you would want to avoid spending it where you don't necessarily have to, as with beta readers. So there are exchanges of services you can do if you're getting beta reading from another writer, maybe you can be a beta reader for them and so on. That way you can save your budget for other areas of the publishing process. So would I personally pay for a beta reader? As I mentioned earlier, I kind of have really mixed feelings about this. I've always thought of beta reading as being part of what it means to be in the writing community. It's something you do for others and they do for you. I also never really thought of it before as professional work. I always assumed it was specifically non-professional, that you wanted people who were just readers, the average person, to give you their feedback, and that that was separate from a more professional critique. Having said that, I have come to see some reasons why paid beta reading might be a really good thing. I think once money has exchanged hands, you're getting that pretty solid commitment to working through and finishing the project, and that can be really important when it comes to beta reading because it is pretty common for beta readers not to finish what they've signed on to do. Again, not wanting to shame people for that, but it's part of the process, and if you can avoid having that be the process, that can be really helpful, especially if you're on a deadline. And also, like I said earlier, if you don't feel like you have that really solid writing community yet, if you pay for the service, then you can still get that feedback without having to wait until you feel like you're in a position where you can get it more organically. And then of course there's the part where a beta reader is doing a lot of work for you, so it makes sense that you might wanna pay him for that. Anyway, I would love to know what you think about beta readers. Have you paid for them? Do you choose not to pay for them? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments. I don't personally offer paid beta reading services, but I do offer manuscript critique developmental editing, and copy editing, all of which can be super helpful once you're past the beta reader stage. So more information on that below. Or maybe at the moment you're more interested in reading about cranky empaths and experiments on magical people, and if that's the case, you can find out more about my contemporary fantasy novel, Dark Empathy, down below too. That's it for this episode of Bardic Fool's Editing Advice for Writers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.